you're headed to Lorington Tower too? Just a bit ago, a brawny silver-haired man asked me how to get there. Did he say why he was going there? Something about meeting some friends of his. Exorcists use that tower to train, right? If he has exorcist friends, then maybe he's one too. But he seemed a bit rough and tumble to be an exorcist. I can't imagine a man like him. Did he say anything else? He said someone else might stop by and ask about the tower, and told me to tell him if they do. Did he mean you? <sighs> no clue. So he was planning on us following him. What's he scheming? You mean Zavid? Or the Abbey? Both. Oh boy, I can already sense a plot twist or something bad is gonna happen. Loringen Tower lies beyond the Burnak Plateau. Blah! If you're gonna set up an obvious trap, couldn't it at least be someplace more convenient? I guess we're going up there. <sighs> What's wrong, Lafayette? said? I was just wondering why Aizen and Zavid can't work together to find Eifried. All men their age care about is their reputation, their street cred. Such a hassle. Oh, really? Well, I can't fully deny it. <sighs> the same could be said of women, and of everyone, really. It's hard to work alongside someone unless you strive to understand their thoughts and feelings. And if you can't? Well, um... It's like Zavid said. You start talking with your fists instead. Sounds harder than I thought. Oh boy, that is... Yeah, and why not attack it? Style is really unique. Are we ready for this? Shooting star! Shooting star! Shooting star! Shooting star! Shooting 
Did you think you could escape me? Whoa! Hot water is spouting out of the mountain! And look at those rainbows. This is one of the seven wonders of the world, the Burnack Geyser. The water heats up from underground until the pressure forces it to spray up from the surface. And the rainbows are caused by light reflecting from the salt suspended in the mineral water. It took tens of thousands of years for the minerals to accumulate here and form this phenomenon. Wowee! That was very educational. At least you know plenty of trivia, if nothing else. Additionally, the groundwater veins that feed this geyser are connected to the sea. Because of this, every now and then a boiled octopus or crab will shoot out from the geyser! No way! That's impossible! Well, not impossible, but with the salt content of the geyser's water, I bet they're seasoned to perfection. Mogulu, I'm declaring your bizarre imagination the eighth wonder of the world. People say that all the time. Aizen! Did you get the medicine to the ship's crew? Yeah. Good. My thanks to you. These soldiers won't be happy in the morning, but they're alive. Is this your work? No. They were like this when I got here. It must have been Zavid. He didn't kill a single one. Interesting. The Abbey is going to great lengths to arrest him. Even so, he clearly knows he's walking into a trap. What I don't get is why he roped me into all of this. If he didn't want my help, then what need did he have to play the Eifried card on me? If you knew this was a trap, why did you come? To see for myself. When I met Eifried, I was wallowing in despair that I would ever find a way to break the Reaper's curse. Stop denying reality, he told me. If you were really born with that curse, then it's a part of you. But if the Reaper learns to grasp the wheel of his life, even he may find his creed, his path through stormy waters. And so, I joined him aboard the Von Eltia. A creed of life. Let's say someone's murdered the captain. If it came as the result of him living life on his terms, I could accept that. Hmm. But if anyone, and I mean anyone, tries to crush his way of life, I could never forgive them. Who's there? It's rude to eavesdrop. If you got secrets, talk about them at home. Zavid, isn't there any way you and Aizen can work together somehow? Not if he's going to keep acting like this. Oh, come on! <clears throat> well, that's how it is. What was the point of all that posturing? He could have just stayed hidden. Weirdo. Can't disagree there. Loringen Tower is a training ground for exorcists, right? Yes. It's a great edifice built on ancient ruins. Luffy said, did you ever go there when you were tethered to Teresa? I don't really remember the beginning of my service to Teresa. I see. What sort of training do they do there? Exorcists are tested and assigned Malakim equivalent to their aptitude with mana. It's also where they practice Malak arts and study our laws. So the lower ranks use it as a sparring ground in order to train up to the higher ranks? No, an exorcist's affinity to mana is not something that strengthens through training. We are given Malakim based on our inborn ability, then learn arts to suit that ability. So, an orderly is an orderly for life, then? Correct. There'd be no spirit of competition, then. Don't they want to get stronger, to advance through the ranks? There'd be no purpose to advancement. Rank signifies nothing more than the type and number of Malakim one can tether. People join the Abbey for only two reasons. To protect people from demons, and to save the world. Are all of you that dedicated to asceticism? How sickeningly noble of you. I wonder if your wills are suppressed just like those of the Malakim you use. Deviants like you could never possibly understand our motives. In any case, that is who awaits you at Loringen Tower. So we're in for a rough welcome. I say bring it on.
Oh, hello. How did they? Oh, I don't have enough. Damn it. Okay, let's see this kid. I can't wrap my head around Zavid. Hmm. We witnessed his unwillingness to kill before, but it seems he's quite serious about it. Maybe that's why I don't feel scared of him. Even when he and Aizen were about to fight, I didn't feel tense at all. Perhaps that's just because you've been around Velvet a bit too long, kiddo. Next to her, few people are frightening. Do you think so? Don't ask me. <laughs> he doesn't come across as vicious. I think that's why you're not scared. Because he's just a brawler? <laughs> Maybe he's just naive. Okay, so he's just a naive brawler. He's still involved with Eifried's disappearance, and he's also taking on the Abbey. I just don't get him. Me neither. Uh-huh. I agree, but I don't understand any of you either. Well, that was something. I don't get it. Get what? Why did Eifried let Aizen join a ship, knowing he carried the Reaper's curse with him? What good did it do? I just don't see the reason behind it. Well, if it were me who had that curse, it would mean that you and Velvet could die because of it, right? Yeah, I suppose so. If that's the case, then I'd feel like I'd both want to and not want to be close to you two. And I'd probably really, really hate myself for it. Do you suppose that's how Aizen feels? But Eifried still took him in. He agreed they put up with the curse together. It's all a bit hard to fathom. Well, if one thing's for certain, it sounds like Eifried's a very strong man. At least for a base lawless pirate. Aizen? Can I ask you about that thing Savid had? It belonged to Eifried, didn't it? I've read much of the Abbey's archives and weaponry, but I've never seen anything like it. He found it when we crossed to the far continent. It's a relic from a long-vanished civilization. He's like me and can't resist a good treasure. But of everything we've found, that one was his most prized. What is it? I can't say. It seemed like a weapon, but Eifried wouldn't let anyone touch it. He went off and tested it on his own. Then came back all grinning, saying he had an ace up his sleeve the next time we got into a fight. Then it's definitely some sort of ancient combat device? But why is Zavid looking for Eifried? To apologize for stealing it? He doesn't seem like that much of a gentleman. Did he really steal it? What do you mean? It's just my feeling, but... Zavid doesn't seem like the type of Moloch to steal something so precious. He said he just picked it up. Perhaps he's trying to return it. Perhaps. The Academy is dead, isn't he? Or he's gonna be dead. Oh, phew, that was close. Huh. Oh wait, we're supposed to actually take there? Maybe it's gonna be a safe point there. guard they're really not bothering to hide this trap they probably knew we'd sense it the question now is just what they're planning to spring on us Aizen, when and how did Ifri disappear exactly? And how did you two meet in the first place? You know, you ask an awful lot of questions about us. What? I don't mean to 
pry, really. Perhaps it's a habit I picked up from my work. Drat. It seems I've been digging too hard. No matter. Eifried vanished about a year ago. <sighs> he agreed to fight a duel against someone, and secretly left to meet his opponent. Once we figured out what was happening, we rushed to the scene. But all we found was the aftermath of a fight, and a pendulum. Was Zavid his opponent? Given his choice of weapon and his ability to fight, I'd say it's likely. What I don't get is why Eifried would end up captured and imprisoned by the Abbey after a fight with a stray Moloch. The Abbey had him prisoner? On their island. Until an exorcist named Melchior took him away, that is. What? Lord Melchior did? The Abbey would have captured Eifried about a year ago. Surely it must have caused quite a stir. I, I was simply patrolling. I wasn't involved in any such operations. Oh. But I do remember that we suffered a great number of casualties around that time. I never heard why, and when I went to investigate, I found no records of any major deployment. And then I was ordered to cease any such investigation by Lord Melchior. That's fishy. He wanted to hide something, clearly. And I think I'm starting to get a picture of what it was. And it involves the Abbey? Yeah, how much is gonna take you to analyze that the Abbey is not so nice to say? Okay, so yeah, I spelled this a little, so yeah. Let's uh, enter the trap. Eifried. So, this is Von Eifried. Eisen, it's good to see you again. So you're alive. You could have sent a letter. <laughs> when have you ever written a letter to another man? <laughs> True. Aside from my little brother, not even once. You have Your a little brother? brother? Ah, yes. You told me that once. <laughs> Eisen, why? I've got no brother. Oh. That was a nice take. For both. Enough of your tricks. <laughs> oh, hello. Wait, is that her? Yeah, it's really her. <laughs> Thanks for luring him out. I owe you one. Zavid. Now come on out, you old coot! Lord Melchior. Breaking through my double illusion. Impressive. I make it a point not to fall for the same tricks twice. I shouldn't have let you get away last time. I won't make that mistake again. Why am I here? Her consciousness has returned, so that is its power. <laughs> he turned her into a demon. What? This can't be happening! A chain reaction? Your Reaper's curse is quite a dreadful affliction, isn't it? Don't you run away! Yeah! 
Looks like you got caught in your own trap, old man. Oh, are you sure about that? What the? I'll take care of the last one. What are you doing? Just say, don't eat. He just saved the wyvern? You folks jump in and kill without a second thought. Is that your creed? Marvelous. Your Siegfried is just the power I've been looking for. What? My work here is done. The hell did you do? Just go out to him. Follow them. Sure got some speedy legs for an old fart. I'm glad to see you're okay, Zabid. It's not me that I'm worried about. Melchior was highly interested in your weapon. And yet he didn't steal it. Surely a legate like him could snatch it if he wanted to. Why bother stealing it? When you can just copy its hidden formula. Some arts can decipher the workings of other arts in a split second. And guess what Melchior's specialty is? As he left, he said, my work here is done. The Abbey must have some use for that unknown art. Who knows what? After all, they brought it here from another continent. <laughs> then we'll find out what they're after and crush it to dust. Let me ask you just one question. Why do you have Siegfried? I'm counting on you, he said. Back when I served the exorcists, they sent me on a mission to capture Eifried. Sabid, you were once their slave? Yeah. My mind was under the influence of Inominat's domain. But when Eifried aimed this baby at me, one shot was all it took to open my eyes. The fight we had after that was one for the books. <laughs> he might have been a human, but that guy was a beast. Put a song in my soul. 
But then Melchior had to jump in and spirit Eifried away with one of his damned illusions. That old bastard! Playing tricks with people's minds. But why'd he grab Eifried and not Siegfried when he had the chance? He probably didn't know at the time that this guy was the real prize he was after. But Eifried knew. Right before he was taken, he distracted Melchior long enough to hand Siegfried over to me. <sighs> well, that's all I know. Whether you believe me or not is up to you. Got it. We're done here. Huh? That was easy. Eifried only says I'm counting on you to people he trusts. Is that so? So, what are you gonna do now? Gonna keep looking for Eifried. So we gotta give this back and settle our score. I doubt you have much time left to get that done. I'd hazard a guess that until now, Melchior was unaware what Siegfried could really do. In other words, he and the exorcists weren't able to interrogate anything out of their captive. And now that Eifried's no longer needed, I see no reason for them to keep him alive. You think I don't know that? If you really want to save Eifried, you probably ought to team up with us. Nope. No can do. Why not? You lot will do anything to achieve your goals. Even kill. <gasps> Sorry, I'm a fighter, not a killer. I won't steal a single life. That's just my creed. And I've got no intention of changing our pirate creed either. Aizen and Zavid have their own creeds. They both have such strong principles, even though they're so different. Just like humans. Wait, did she... Did she... Did she pause? This is T-Pose. Okay, I have to look the recording. But man, that was something. I think we're gonna listen to these kids and we're gonna say a close for today. Well, that was sure something. Melchior and his illusions are cheats. There's no cheating in combat. What I meant is that they were awfully dirty tricks for an upstanding exorcist. And the illusions seemed so real. Had that gone on any longer, I wouldn't have been able to tell what was real and what was fake. If it can't be distinguished from reality, perhaps one could live a happier life within the illusion. Hmm. That sort of happiness can rot. You think so? But by using illusions, you can defeat an opponent without causing them any physical harm. Oh, how humane. Wow, the Abbey is so great. Lord Melchior is an exemplary man who has served Lord Artorias since before the Abbey's founding. He's done everything from logistical planning, to defense strategy, and even political negotiations. He shows the utmost concern, even for his opponents, so... He turned a friendly Moloch into a dragon. Th that was... Physical wounds can heal. Emotional wounds never fully fade. Yeah, but... Don't lose heart, Eleanor. Foul play is foul play, but you're talking to a demon and a witch. Who can judge? I appreciate that you're trying to console me, but as an exorcist, I cannot accept this. Well, that was something. Well, we kind of progress a little. I think we kind of in the middle point to say. Maybe. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this. I'm not sure if this is gonna be for the end of the episode, because I don't know why I should not actually say aloha and try to have anything because I don't know how much I'm gonna cut in. Yeah, hope you enjoy this part and yeah, maybe see you in a second. Aloha. <laughs>